Two Shawnee Mission educators earn national recognition for their dedication to inspiring students in the area of science. Three district schools celebrate being among the top achievers in the state. A new program helps connect community partners with neighborhood schools. And high school journalists showcase their print, online, and broadcast work. These stories and more on this episode of Spotlight on Shawnee Mission. Welcome to Spotlight on Shawnee Mission. I'm your host, Leanne Neal. A Shawnee Mission educator is in some elite company. She received a presidential award for her creativity in teaching science concepts. Blue Jacket Flint students and staff knew they were gathering for an honors ceremony, but they didn't know it would include one very special honoree. Now for my second presentation, would Mrs. Constance please come forward? Principal Kevin Frick announced to everyone that sixth grade teacher Lindsay Constance is a recipient of the Presidential Award for Excellence in Mathematics and Science Teaching. This prestigious honor is given to 102 outstanding educators across the country. To help with the presentation, Mr. Frick invited a surprise guest, Mrs. Constance's fifth grade teacher, Georgia Smith. It is a great honor and uh, to receive the award, but she couldn't have done it without all the boys and girls that you have over the years, all your teachers that you work with, even the administrators. <laughs> so <laughs> I think it's a pretty great award. So congratulations. So I was really um, surprised and excited when I looked up and saw Mrs. Smith walk across the stage and um, it was so exciting because Mrs. Smith was probably um, you know, one of the key people who got me excited about science and who had me want to be a teacher. I think she was genuinely surprised to see me of all people, you know, because the last time she seen me I was substituting in her classroom <laughs> and so it's kind of, it's fun and I'm proud of her. She's done a marvelous job with her students and she makes education look good. So we're kind of thinking about what you expect to see. As part of the competition, Constance had to create a sample science assignment on a topic about which she thought students had misconceptions. So my topic was on condensation um, and the idea that often kids think that condensation is water that seeps through a cup. And so the lesson was intended to help them understand that that's not the way condensation works. It's from the air outside being cooled by the ice inside the cup. So that's what we did. Okay. As an honoree, Constance received a $10,000 award from the National Science Foundation and had the opportunity to attend an award ceremony in Washington, D.C. Across the district at Shawnee Mission South, Honors Biology and Human Anatomy and Physiology teacher Jan Alderson received the news that she was a member of the next class of educators to be inducted into the National Teachers Hall of Fame. Well, I'm here today for a very, very special purpose, and that is to say thank you to teachers, to those people who have taught us lessons about life, lessons that will remain with us longer than any math formula or historical date. Principal Joe Gilhouse, Superintendent Jim Henson, members of the Board of Education, and family and friends joined students and staff at an all-school assembly to surprise Alderson with the good news. Mrs. Alderson, please consider this the official notification of your selection as an inductee into the National Teachers Hall of Fame class of 2014. On behalf of the National Hall of Fame Board of Trustees and the 110 current members, I'm proud to be here at Shawnee Mission South High School today to commemorate this day and to celebrate your teaching career achievements. May your selection stand as an example to all, representing what can be achieved by doing what you love and giving up yourself for the growth and well-being of your students. Mrs. Alderson represents what is great in American education today. It really, it really is an honor to be a part of that, I just, to rec be recognized is just such a privilege and I'm, I hope from this maybe I can keep making a difference in the education community. I think it's real important to, as an ed educator, not only what you do in the classroom, but also how do you affect the community at large. Well deserved, the woman has been an, edu an educator for, I think she said 19 years in another district and 14 already in our district, so a very long time and she has steered kids towards science. She's a wonderful teacher and we are so blessed to have teachers like hers in our district. I absolutely love teaching science. It's so much fun. Uh, I find that it's a very creative process. 
Uh, my favorite thing in science education is to have a highly engaging lab. They learn so much from it, but yet they find it so interesting. So I think that to me is, is my favorite. The relationships that she builds with her kids are second to none. The level of instructions that she challenges kids with, again, second to none. She's just the consummate professional and just does an outstanding job day in and day out. I really want to thank the National Teacher Hall of Fame. What I like to do is to use this to, again, to leverage some input into what's going on in the education, within the educational community, especially STEM education. Try to get everybody to work together to make a difference. Alderson is being honored for 45 years of dedication as an educator and will be inducted in June during an official ceremony in Emporia. Up next, the state recognizes outstanding achievement at three Shawnee Mission schools. I read the book, America's Under Attack, by Don Brown. I learned about the people affected by 9-11. If you want a nonfiction book about the attack, then this book is definitely for you. The best part was when the people wanted to give up, but they stood strong and kept trying to get out or help other people along the way. If you want a book with amazing pictures and facts, then you will like this book. It'll help you know what it was like during the time of 9-11. I give this book five out of five stars for the amazing pictures and facts. I didn't want to put the book down. Welcome back. Three Shawnee Mission schools are celebrating a significant academic accomplishment. Indian Hills Middle School and Corinth and Westwood View Elementary Schools are all recipients of the Governor's Achievement Award. What I have to present to you this afternoon is the Governor's Achievement Award for the 2012-2013 school year to the Indian Hills Middle School. Now, At Indian Governor Hills, Maxwell Shawnee Maxwell Mission Superintendent today. Jim Henson Jim helped the middle school students celebrate their accomplishment. Give yourself another round of applause and congratulations. To receive the Governor's Achievement Award from the Kansas Department of Education, a school must be among the top 5% of schools in reading and math on state assessments and meet attendance requirements. And Indian Hills was recognized based on last year's scores as being one of only 10 schools in the state of Kansas um, to achieve at this level. So that is a tribute to all that you are doing every day in your classrooms and all that your teachers are doing. So we are very, very proud of their achievement, and I think it's, um, it's just really fun to pat them on the back and, and note how noteworthy this really is. While Indian Hills celebrated a top 10 finish among the middle schools, Westwood View held an assembly of its own to celebrate being one of only 42 elementary schools honored. This is the Governor's Award for being the top 5% of all elementary schools in the entire state Kansas. We are very, very proud of your accomplishments for you, our students, but also our teachers as well. Westwood View Principal Susan Knight is excited about her students' achievement, especially since it is the second time the school has been recognized. I'm just hoping it continues and we just keep setting those goals higher and higher and uh, I don't think that we ever want to become stagnant or satisfied with the job that we do, but continue to look toward the future and doing the best job that we can possibly do for kids. You know what, it was it was great. I have three kids in the school and so I have a sixth grader, a fourth grader and a first grader and um, they work hard day in and day out. The teachers really do and focus on the kids so I was excited to see them get recognized for their hard work whether it's the teachers and the kids. Our congratulations go out to Corinth Elementary which also received a Governor's Achievement Award. Keep up the outstanding work, Corinth, Westwood View, and Indian Hills. Coming up, we'll see how Shawnee Mission Schools are benefiting from a new process to connect them with community partners.
Welcome back to Spotlight on Shawnee Mission. Schools in our district have a new source of support. A group called Caring for Kids is putting people and resources to work with one goal in mind, helping children succeed. We're not a program, so we don't bring any programs uh, to the schools. We actually bring a process that begins with this amazing question, how can we help you? We have this vision for our district with Caring for Kids. Faith-based organizations, nonprofits, for-profit companies working for the betterment of a school. Through the years, I've tried to get into the school district, and I think Caring for Kids really opened up those doors for us to, to say, I'm not here to push anything on you other than we really want to help, and how can we effectively do that? We don't come in and serve a school so that they will do anything for us. What's the need? How can we help? He says he has no agenda. I do say he has an agenda, and his agenda is just to make our community better. There are those things that we are not providing because of the funding shortfall. So here you have a partner coming in saying, hey, what do you need? You need some food for the weekend? We'll do it. I see some of your kids need coats. We'll get a, a coat drive. Those immediate needs are being taken care of through those faith-based partners. And it really, then we can focus on the education. I heard about caring for kids, just getting with a group of business leaders and with pastors and they started talking about uh, this program called Caring for Kids and it was something that was already on my heart and so I just linked up with them and said let's do this together. You know there's nothing that makes a difference more than just seeing the excitement in their eyes. I work with my tutor and we work on reading, spelling and math. I feel really good because he's He's really fun, really smart, and talented with helping, helping me with my work. It is so difficult to give every kid what you want to give them, and I think most of us are teachers because we want to help every kid, and we just had a lot of success with different parts of the curriculum using these MVP volunteers. And so I just got to dreaming. You know, what would it look like to get the city, the school, and a nonprofit working together to accomplish something? And that something was providing bicycles to the students in our area. And man, they would just walk in, first come, first serve, right? And we would let them go in like 10 at a time and get their bikes. They would pick out a bike. And then the next stop was they stopped at Santa Claus, took a picture with Santa and their bike. I liked the color of it and it was like the right size. So that's the one I got. I don't have to walk everywhere. So like I can like ride my bike and stuff. Uh, some other things that we've done for the school is redoing all of the shrub work around uh, all of the landscaping of Shawano's front end of the building. We've heard from business partners, we want to help. They have the drive, the desire to do so. They just need direction. Well, I think if you want to have a great community, we need to be involved in our community. And I think the, a great community starts with our kids. It's merging life skills and education and, and what we feel as a faith community we have to offer to families. There's partnerships arising at the grassroots to come and deal with some of the problems in our cities. And Caring for Kids is a connection piece that helps bring those things together. And if you're a church or you know, a business or a civic organization or even an individual, we, we just want to invite you to take a step, to take a risk. We want the schools, the principals, the administrators, and the teachers to know that they're not alone in this. What you do for our students in our school district is so very important. Each and every one of you are so important to what we do every single day in the Shawnee Mission School District. Close your eyes and just dream of every child gets to succeed. They're going to be whole and healthy and successful. Caring for Kids KC started out working with just a few Shawnee Mission schools, but the early success of these partnerships prompted expansion into more schools. Now organizers hope it won't be long before there are partnerships in place for every Shawnee Mission school. These partnerships begin with roundtable discussions where community groups sit down and talk with school leaders in their neighborhoods. This process allows the partners to discuss challenges and opportunities unique to each school. We're all saying that these are our kids and that we have ownership in that. And so I want to celebrate the energy and the idea of community and relationships because here's the thing. We want to have sustainable 
partnerships, right? That means we want partnerships to last for a long period of time. We're on the verge of a community garden on site at Neiman, uh, literally community members, uh, students, staff, uh, the city of Shawnee, um, just, just very proud of uh, all the connections that we're making and it's uh, slow growing but it seems to be uh, deep-rooted. If we somehow, some way can help all the kids in our community be whole and healthy, guess what? Crime decreases, drug addiction decreases. If this can happen simply by churches and businesses and civic groups really working together to help every child be successful, that's, that's something that captures my heart. To learn more about Caring for Kids and how to get involved, visit www.caringforkidskc.org. Up next, it's a growing opportunity for culinary students at the Broadmoor Technical Center. Plus, student journalists showcase their work when Spotlight on Shawnee Mission returns. Rachel and I read the book A Tale Dark and Grim by Adam Gidlitz. This book is about all the real journeys that Hansel and Gretel have had. The children left their home at the palace because their parents, the king and the queen, had cut off their heads to save a friend of theirs. The friend then picked the kids' heads up and placed them back on the children's bodies. The children were saved but thought their parents were murderers so decided to run away. After the children ran away, they had many dark and grim adventures. Will they return to their original home? Will they survive by themselves? Read this book to find out. I rate this book 5 out of 5 stars because it is gruesome but fun. Welcome back. Eating local foods is better for you for the environment, and most importantly, for your taste buds. But what does it take to grow your own produce? Shawnee Mission students and staff are finding out at the new Broadmoor Urban Farm. <laughs> right now we're starting our urban farm, which is going to allow students to have the opportunity to grow and use their own fruits and vegetables and learn about how being organic and growing those things yourself can really actually help the health of your body and the health of people around you. One, two, three, drop. The groundbreaking it is a true groundbreaking. Uh, we had the ground plowed about three weeks ago. It just made sense to start teaching our students the proper way to, to uh, be great tenders of uh, our environment as well as the products that they're using. Uh, to develop really good nutrition habits, they clearly need to see the difference in what grown food is versus what bought food is. When you eat, you eat with your eyes first. So if you see something that's a vibrant color, we're going to have 35 different kinds of tomatoes. So when you see different kinds of colors and what looks like different textures, it really enhances the meal for yourself before you even eat it. It's one thing to be able to get a box of frozen vegetables from the store and make it into whatever you want to. But as you watch it grow, as you watch it mature, you learn how to be more creative with that vegetable. And to be able to be hands-on on every, every aspect of their uh, kitchen, that's amazing. This is the way we should be doing it all over, all over the country. Bob's just the example for others to follow now. I hope that they learn about the hard work that goes into this. We live in a world where so much seems easy is given to us and people often don't appreciate how hard it is to grow good food and it makes you value the food differently, treat it with more care and respect. I think it's amazing to understand all the like, the just from the start where you plant the seed and it becomes a vegetable, seedlings, planting, watering, that kind of stuff. I think it's just amazing to know how the food is grown. 
This is gonna be like a really humongous garden. It's one of the biggest like in the whole Midwest. So that's pretty cool for like a school-wide thing. It's pretty nice. So this garden is about a quarter acre. We can, you know, project that if the weather works, we will get between four and 6,000 pounds of vegetables off of there this summer. Four to 6,000 pounds is a meaningful amount of produce. And uh, we'll go into the school district, we'll go into the culinary program. I can't wait till when it goes up to 10 or 15,000 pounds. And I can't wait to come out to get a meal, bottom line. I mean, these kids are doing remarkable work and learning a skill that they can use down the road to become tax-paying citizens. And to be able to complete that by actually getting in the dirt, growing the crops, and making it available to the community, to me, is um, just a remarkable achievement. Yeah, I agree. I think that if this helps raise the awareness and visibility of Broadmoor, then it's really served an additional duty for what's trying to be accomplished here. My job as a landscape architect is to create an environment where um, people and nature can exist in synergy together. And I think this is probably one of the most exciting things. So as you see it come forward, you'll see the human portion of it and the interaction and the, uh, the fresh air and just the, the everything that people get from being outside. Um, all the students are doing a variety of tasks and they're all working in groups and they're working independently and so for me that's an indication that they are passionate about where this is going for them as far as their education. Even though I'm not going to be here next year, I'm really happy that the students coming after me are going to have the opportunity to have organic food to use that I've kind of put my heart and soul into as well. We'll take volunteers, <laughs> you know, because it, I mean, this is going to be a, a large undertaking and as we move forward with the garden you know we definitely would be very interested in having volunteers from our community be a part of the educational process just like the bistro it's just a, a great plus we we love broadmoor tech we love the students that come here the instructors are amazing and uh, we're just so happy that they're a part of the American Culinary Federation. That's what makes our program really great, is that there are a huge amount of career paths. Someone may come in and think that they really, really want to be a chef, but being outside and gardening and seeing you know, the different things that they're doing, they, they might have an interest in being an urban, urban farmer. Who knows? But you know, to have that opportunity is a great opportunity for them to make a really good decision on their future. When completed, the garden will feature 60 types of plants and vegetables that students will use to prepare meals at the Broadmoor Bistro. From newspaper to yearbook to online and broadcasting, these days, student journalists learn to do it all. But what does it take to create award-winning journalism? Students at Shawnee Mission East invited their parents to come check it out. Well, this is the uh, journalism showcase, and the idea behind it is uh, because a lot of the journalism kids spend a, a long time in the journalism room, you know, late nights on Wednesday, when, um, Wednesdays, deadlines, and, you know, the parents want to know what they're doing. The students create the poster board displays to illustrate what it takes to create the school newspaper, The Harbinger, the yearbook, The Hauberk, and their online journalism. You guys help us so much, and it's really great to have you all here and seeing all of our work that we've done throughout the year. And it's really great for me to see all these other kids, just everything that they've done. I think it's awesome. So I'm part of the Harbinger print side, and then I also do some of the live broadcasting for online. And the Harbinger, we basically put out a 24 to 32 page issue every other week. So every other Monday, we'll put out an issue, and it's free to all students. It's kind of a love, but it's also a labor at the same time, because we are constantly putting in so much effort to make our publication the best it can be. And it honestly is the best. I mean, online won best in show, first in the nation. Um, uh, this fall and then print one I think it was seventh in the nation and we are always in the top ten of the nation and it's just really amazing to be part of a publication that is one of the best in the entire country. And I also work on the broadcasting which is where for the online we put together live broadcasts of sporting events, um, concerts and a variety of other things. So we do those normally about two to three a week with a couple of double headers in the winter. So we do that um, online on our website. We have a TriCaster that we use to live web broadcast um, a lot of different sporting events at Shawnee Mission East and so we're one of the few na uh, schools in the nation that you will see broadcasting uh, varsity events just in-house with our own equipment. What, what maybe you don't get and, and maybe you do is how true student run the publications are and that really is the beauty of what we do. Um, 
the end product, as I always say, is never perfect, uh, and it never will be. But the reality is it's their work. Um, it's not me. It's them doing the work. And, um, and they do an incredible job. And they also do a job that's respected nationwide. Students and administrators are quick to give a lot of the credit for the journalism program's success to the leadership of advisor Dow Tate. If you've ever seen him work, he has a way of, it's like herding cats, and he is a master of it. So I'm just very, very proud to work with Mr. Tate and uh, proud to call him a good friend. He brought in a program and he has really just taught us all how to be true journalists. I mean, we're not even student journalists, we are just journalists. These young journalists know the skills they have acquired will help them in the future. I think it's a great job just to learn everything. You can learn so many different skills. I started off just designing pages, but I've learned how to write. I communicate to people because I do a lot of the commentating for football and for some of the basketball. So I've done really a lot of different things, and I think that's going to help me a lot. We spend so much time in the journalism room working on both of our publications, both online and print, and we just spend so much time together, so we become very, very close with each other. You know, that's, that's sort of that aspect of it, and it really, like I said, speaks to um, speaks to the quality of the work that these kids do. You can see samples of Shawnee Mission East journalists' work by visiting the Harbinger online at smeharbinger.net. Each year, student journalists at each of the five high schools in Shawnee Mission are honored with state and national awards for excellence. That's all the time we have for this episode of Spotlight on Shawnee Mission. Join us again as we continue to feature the programs and people of Shawnee Mission who are helping guide students to success. Thank you for watching.